So at this time, it's uh, my, my privilege to introduce the athletic director, Mark Allnut. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's uh, press conference as it pertains to the football, the future of football here at Southeast Missouri State. And also a special thank you to uh, Dr. Dobbins, uh, you know, our great president here, and also our board of regents. Appreciate all the support that you have for uh, Red Hawks Athletics. <clears throat> well, as you're well aware, we made a change in our leadership of our football program about three weeks ago uh, yesterday. And we began a national search to identify uh, and put in place our next head coach. Uh, Dr. Dobbins, again, trusted me personally to handle and lead this search, which I was so very grateful to him allowing me to do that. But I'm also thankful to enlist the services of uh, Brady Barkey, senior associate to the, to the president. I know Brady right over here to the left, but uh, he was a person that uh, you know, assisted me with this search and did a tremendous job with you know, doing the research uh, on potential uh, candidates and a person I could personally bounce ideas off of. So there was a lot of long nights and, and, and phone calls and text messages back and, for, back and forth, but uh, an outstanding young leader you know, for us. I'm glad that he's in the position that he's in. You know, also be remiss if I don't mention the tremendous support of our uh, HR department, uh, led by Jim Cook, Alyssa Van Dieven, and Dana Seaball. You guys might be in the back somewhere, but thank you for allowing us to go through this procedure, you know, the right way and correct way and, and being a very valuable asset to us. Well, when you go through a process like this, you know, you have to be very efficient. You have to be proactive. You know, you can't just wait for ap applicants to come to you. And you also have to do your due diligence. And as I mentioned before, follow all HR procedures and protocol. And that way you can identify the candidate that I believe will be able to do an outstanding job for us in this role. You know, it begins with research. You have to do tremendous research. You know, one thing that I, I wanted to do is, is research schools in this region, you know, schools that have been successful with their football programs. You know, whether it was a period of time, and where did those coaches go? You know, where are they now? You know, what's going on in current situations? That research was outstanding. Also utilizing a professional network, you know, in every business, every job that we have is all about network. And, and it's important to have that valuable network. So when a name came to me, or, I, or if I was researching a name, you know, I knew a person I could call, whether that be a coach, an athletic director, an administrator, someone on campus administration, uh, a donor for that, uh, for that program. So there was not one name where I didn't have some type of connection to that person, which I, I feel extremely, extremely important about. And then also you have to identify the needs of this program. You know, who are we? You know, what have we accomplished? What do we need to accomplish? And, and, what, and who do we want to be? You know, mainly, that's, that's very important. So we had over 40 applicants that applied officially, that sent in their resumes, and that, uh, you know, Dana spent a lot of work kind of, you know, going through that to make sure they, they met all the qualifications. But then also, due to the confidential, confidential nature of this, of this business, you know, there was about 30 plus people that reached out to me either on their own or also might have had a third party uh, agent or, or some type of representative contact me expressing interest in the job. You know, as you can imagine, when you, when you get these calls, when you get these text messages, emails, whatever the case might be, every coach out there is, is the best at a particular offensive scheme. Every coach might be the best at a particular defensive scheme. Someone might tell you that they're the best recruiter in the nation. Okay, you get, you get all that. You won't get a coach to say, I guess I'm average at it. They're all the best. <laughs> they're all the best. And you know the thing, too, that makes all of us proud here? They all want to be here at Southeast Missouri State University. All those applicants and people that reached out to me wanted to be here at Southeast uh, Missouri State University. But in the end, it comes down to fit. Okay, you can have the best, the best X's and O's coaches. You can have the best recruiter. But what is the fit here with what we're trying to do from a department standpoint, what the university is trying to do from, from their vision that they have from the university, what the community is all about, and also this important region. You always hear me say the I-55 corridor from St. Louis to Memphis is a very important region for us to be able to capitalize in that. Also wanted someone who, who had experience, success. That's important. And, and also importantly, someone that, that went through a turnaround. In, in a program building. So knows what it takes to start a program, you know, where we are currently, and then to be able to build it to a perennial winner. Someone that has that, that blueprint, so to say. Someone that knows it's a structured approach, you know, it's a systematic approach, you know, no one that's looking for the quick fix, and someone that can, that can bring in staff and student athletes that are about getting the job done in a first class way. 
Furthermore, fur furthermore, you need someone that's going to care about our student athletes off the field. Okay, it's not all about playing football. You know, you know, our student athletes are are, are are blessed to have the ability to to play at a level beyond high school, which is very important. But also, we understand that chances for our student athletes to go on at a professional level is slim to none. So, how will this person mold? You know, our 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 17, 18 year olds to young men and and make sure that they're successful off the field. That's that's very important to what we try to do. You know, a person that can also tout academic success. You know, as Dr. Dobbins mentioned, student athletes. It's the reason why it's student athletes. It's not athlete students. It's students first. You know, someone that understands the value and the importance of academics and how that relates with with athletics. You know, there was a saying that I, that I heard recently. You know, you can't attempt to be successful in one area of your life if you plan to be mediocre in others. You know, just think about that. You know, you know, our football players can't expect to win OVC championships if, you know what, they're haphazardly going to class, don't care about reaching out to the community, whatever the case is. You know what, in order to be a true champion, you know, you have to be a true champion in everything that you put your mind into. So this process took us, took us down to three finalists. You know, and having a chance to, to personally visit uh, with, with two of them here uh, last week on campus. Uh, they were late nights. Um, that's why, you know, probably didn't see myself or Brady, you know, running around. But uh, we, we had them here late, you know, checking the place out and, you know, sitting down and, and having that heart to heart. Not your typical, you know, what do you aspire to be, you know, in two or three years or tell me your, your professional goals. But you know what? Get to know a person as a person and get to know what their beliefs are and, and how, what the fit might be from a, football, from, a, from a football standpoint and building a football program. So two of the candidates came in last week, and I had an opportunity to fly out and visit you know, another candidate uh, last week. But after I got back from that trip last week, I quickly realized that, that one candidate you know, rose to the top of all those qualities that I talked about and, all the, and, and what I firmly believe it takes to, to build a successful program here. And also a person that I know is going to share my belief of providing a first-class experience for our student-athletes through academic excellence, social development, and competitive success. So I'm so excited, you know, to welcome his wife, Lena. And, you know, I, I'm looking forward to meeting their two daughters, Georgia and Shelby. And it's my pleasure right now to introduce to you our 13th head football coach here at Southeast Missouri State University, a Missouri native who was born in St. Joseph, who now we welcome back to Missouri. Tom Atukowitz. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. I feel like a player all blinged out with my hat here. You know, for me, to put it in an athlete perspective, this is like getting drafted. Since I was 12 years old, I dreamed about the day that I could meet my own team, which I did 30 minutes ago. And this is truly a, a dream come true. And I'm, I'm really, really excited to be your head football coach. Um, I want to take a minute. <clears throat> you know, I don't plan on having too many of these conferences. So some of you guys in the back, now you may want to grab a seat because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy this process. <laughs> so. I think it all starts with leadership and, and definitely want to thank Dr. Dobbins and having the opportunity to get him uh, to meet him on campus and his vision and his legacy, what he's done at Southeast Missouri State stands alone. Uh, he wants the same thing I want. And so that, that, that's why I'm here today. And, and really, you know, to be honest, I'm probably most thankful for hiring Mark on that. Um, when, when the job opened, I uh, got online and uh, took a look and um, then started reading about Mark Allnut and some of the momentum and uh, what's going on in the athletic department, and it was really exciting. Uh, a day later, my phone rings, and it's Mark Allnut, and he said, hey, I'm, I'm headed to Mexico, but I want to know if you're, you'd be interested in the job, and, and like we said, the rest is, is, is history. Um, I want to start by thanking Toledo coach, head coach Matt Campbell. Uh, uh, Mike O'Brien, the athletic director, and um, those people for giving me an opportunity to be a coordinator. I feel like that was the last step I needed uh, to become a head football coach, and they gave me that opportunity, and I'm very thankful. I'm thankful for a woman, uh, Lena Matukowicz. Why don't you go ahead and stand up, Lena?
I know we're going to get a bunch of questions, and you know, I know you guys are wondering what kind of recruiter I am. And, um, you know, 15 years ago, I asked her to marry me, and she said no. <laughs> so, you know, I had to do what all good recruiters do, and I got to mom to say yes. <laughs> and, it, and it's been an amazing ride, babe, and, and you, know, uh, you know I love you, and I can't wait to do this w with you and the family. So uh, I want to thank all the players that I've had the privilege of coaching, all the coaches that I've, I've coached next to, and I really believe that you can learn something from everybody, and, and I, I feel fortunate that I had the opportunity to work along, alongside of the, some of the best. Uh, we have two beautiful children. Um, one is six, Georgia Matukowicz. Uh, her street name or, uh, is G Money. <laughs> so uh, she's six and she, she's a firecracker. And for whatever reason, we've had children that uh, my six year old is blonde with blue eyes, and my one year old, Shelby, has red hair and blue eyes. So we're trying to figure that one out. <laughs> But, but they are super excited, and they've already burned all their blue and gold, and uh, they're, they're ready for the, the black and red. I want to uh, thank uh, the Michael family, and, and my coach is actually here today. And, um, you know, this is why I got into coaching. Uh, my kids as kids will not be the same because of a coach. I lived with him when I was in high school, and I was a guy that, you know, I was confused and struggled and, you know, I, I had a lot of issues and, and it took a coach uh, to explain something to me that, that that family couldn't. And I'm just truly thankful for them. I'm thankful for a dad that taught me from an early age about hard work. And that's what I built my whole foundation of life on is, is hard work. And I'm thankful for a mom helped me be a better parent because she showed me what unconditional love is all about. I'm thankful for a brother that's two years older than me that, that sent money, $50 a week to me in college because I was going to be the first one out of my family to graduate. I want to thank Roger and Sharon Leip uh, that were difference makers in our lives that when we, were, when we first got to uh, the team up north. I'm not going to say their name, but... <laughs> um, you know, I was a young, young coach, and I'd have done anything to win a game uh, legally, but, like, I was that driven. And um, because of their leadership and because they decided to invest in me, I actually became a husband worth having. Um, kind of enough about the thanks um, and, and thank you, but I think it's uh, appropriate to thank the people that, that got you to this, this point in your life. And... Look forward to thanking many more and more people. And there's been people that I've met in HR today and, and obviously my team and some of the coaches that I'm very thankful. But I want to talk about the plan. How are we going to win here at Southeast? Okay. And, and really that's about we're going to be a process driven, all right, not a result oriented program. Okay. It's really about excellence. And what that means is it's about a process. It's about doing ordinary things, okay, with unordinary discipline and uncommon enthusiasm. And so what we're going to have, and you're going to hear us talk a lot about, is brick by brick, okay? And the programs I've, I've been at, I've been a part of three turnarounds, okay? And we built it the right way. Emporia State's in the playoffs today because we built the program based on a foundation. Uh, the team up north. Okay, still winning. Northern Illinois went to an Orange Bowl. And all those programs are still winning because we built it on a rock-solid foundation. And we're going to call that process brick by brick. And so you're going to see videos. You're going to see me talking about it. You're going to see everybody talking about the same thing. And what is that? Brick by brick is about we have finals. We're in the middle of finals. And, and that science test tomorrow, that's a brick. Go kill it. That recruit we signed, that's a brick, okay? That extra lift in a squat rack, that's a brick. That's how you build a program. It's kind of like a decision snowball. If you make a bunch of poor decisions, all right, and it builds like a snowball, eventually that thing just crushes you and you, you can't even help. But the same thing happens when you make enough good decisions, no one can stop us. It gets so big 
all right, that we end up beating a Big Ten school. Because I've done that at FCS level. And I've seen what that does to a community. I've seen what that does to a university, all right, and a program. And those are memories that they'll talk about on their deathbed. Um, we got to be a 12-month program, okay? We have to have our players stay for 12 months and, and work on being a, a, the best football player, the best student. Um, you know, there's a lot of community outreach uh, opportunities in the summer, and, and those are extremely important, and we need to take care of them when they're in the summer, all right? Um, as far as I'm sure everybody wants to know what I'm going to do on offense, defense, and special teams, and all those type of things, and um, we're going to do what our players can do. Um, but here's, here's a blanket statement. I'm going to put a team out there that you're proud of, okay? They're, we're not going to be jumping off sides. We're not going to have bad body language and, and doing things like that. We're going to play hard, okay? I don't know how many games we win, okay? Because that really isn't what it's about. It's about that process. But I promise you, if you come watch us play in the fall, you're going to walk out of there proud, okay? And, and we may not win or we may not, um, you know, win, I guess. But I think you'll, you'll be excited about the product that's on the field, okay? We're going to be a physical. Uh, Discipline team and, and offensively, uh, we're going to you know, do what our players can do. All right, we're going to continue to run. They've ran the ball well here, and, and we're going to do a better job of, of throwing the football. Uh, defensively, we're going to be really creative in, in how we're going to pressure the quarterback. And, and, um, but really what it's about is how we can win the OVC. We're not at a point in a program where we could talk about winning national championships. We will get there. All right, but right now it's about the OVC and, and, and competing that way. Um, recruiting, all right, I'm going to build this program with high school players and done that on my whole life. Okay, the heart and soul is going to come from the area. If there's a good player in Jackson, he better be here. Okay, he better not be somewhere else because that guy's going to put 10 guys in the seats, and I promise you, when it's fourth and one, he cares. He'll die for this university if he had to. We need more guys like that. We obviously got to kill it in St. Louis, and, and that's got to be a major priority. Um, we're going to cast a big enough net that we could get good players. So, you know, we, you'll see us maybe take a transfer. Uh, when I was at uh, a team up north, we, I ended up signing a, a player named Brandon Jacobs, who, who's still playing, and he's not bad. Okay, so we need a couple of those Brandon Jacobs, and it's about relationships. You think he came to the team up north because of their stadium? No. It's because I had a, a relationship, and that's how we're going to do it here. I think I'm really into the student athlete experience. Okay, I'm really into them finding why they're here and what they're passionate about so they can go be successful in their areas of study. I'm really into making sure they give back to the community because I'm telling you right now, when you help someone else, you, you're, you're not the same. So that is extremely important, and that'll be a, a big deal of our program and, and also winning. If you're into the student-athlete experience and they're not winning, they're having a bad time because it crushes them. It kills them. This is how God's created them. They, they need to win and be successful. And to be honest with you, like all I dream about is putting a smile on them face and having that team hold a trophy. Because I've been there, done that, and I've seen and felt what that feels like, and we're going to do it. You know, this isn't Coach Took's team. All right, this is your team. Okay, we need everybody. We need the high school coaches. We need the players. We need everybody to try to add value to our program. Okay, because I've seen what, what a successful program can do and we need to ride the momentum that, that Dr. Dobbins has, has created. And, and now's the time. We've underachieved for 10 years, okay? And, and we're going to move forward, and we're going to get it on. I'm very thankful and proud to be your head football coach, and I can't wait to get started.